A senior British diplomat has resigned over Israel's war on Gaza, calling the British government potentially complicit in Israeli war crimes. Mark Smith was a counter-terrorism official based in the British Embassy in Dublin. Previously, he had also advised the government on arms sales to countries in the Middle East. On Friday, his resignation letter to the Foreign Office was leaked online. In it, Smith said this, There is no justification for the UK's continued arms sales to Israel, yet somehow it continues. I have raised this at every level in the organisation, including through an official whistleblowing investigation, and received nothing more than... Thank you. We have noted your concerns. Ministers claim that the UK has one of the most robust and transparent arms export licensing regimes in the world. However, this is the opposite of the truth. As a fully cleared officer raising concerns of illegality in this department, to be disregarded in this way is deeply troubling. It is my duty as a public servant to raise this. Smith has now spoken out about his attempts to raise the alarm in the Foreign Office speaking to the Day programme. He revealed this. Anybody who has a kind of basic understanding of these things can see that there are war crimes being committed, not once, not twice, not a few times, but quite flagrantly and openly and regularly. Did you raise this internally, this view? Yes. So I raised it with the new foreign secretary and I raised it Uh, at pretty much every level um, in the organisation. That's my duty, and that would be quite normal, I think, for public servants. We're very used to upholding the law, and so we would normally raise things internally that we might have a question over, particularly if we have subject matter specialism, as I do. So I raised it internally. And how did the Foreign Secretary respond? I'm not at liberty to kind of go into detail about exactly how that internal process went. Um, But I resigned from my role um, and I resigned because of this issue. So you can uh, put the pieces together, but uh, suffice it to say that any response was not satisfactory. That's a clear suggestion there. The new Foreign Secretary, David Lammy, wasn't particularly interested in expert advice when it comes to Israeli war crimes. And despite being potentially explosive, the UK media initially appeared to do its best to keep Smith's resignation out of the public eye. The story was broken by former vice journalist Hind Hassan, um, who published Smith's resignation letter online on Friday. That was quickly followed by reports in Middle East Monitor, Squawk Box and Scottish newspaper The National But it was only on Sunday that Sky and The Guardian wrote the story up with further reports finally appearing in the broadsheets and on the BBC on Monday. Um, The Foreign Office has now responded to the story saying this, The government is committed to upholding international law. We have made clear that we will not export items if they might be used to commit or facilitate a serious violation of international humanitarian law. There is an ongoing review process to assess whether Israel is complying with international humanitarian law which the Foreign Secretary initiated on day one in office. Day one of Foreign Secretary David Lammy's time in office was six weeks ago, given that in that time Israel has blown up several schools, attacked the ever-shrinking humanitarian zone in Gaza multiple times, assassinated two political leaders on foreign territory, and seen its citizens protest the arrest of soldiers accused of raping Palestinian prisoners with broom handles. You have to wonder, how much more evidence does David Lammy need And adding to the overwhelming case against Israel are a group of humanitarian organizations, including Al-Haq and Amnesty International. Their lawyers have submitted witness statements documenting war crimes to a UK court as the NGO's CK ban on British arms exports to Israel. The witness statements from Western and Palestinian aid workers in Gaza will be used to bolster the case that Israel is breaching international humanitarian law in the enclave. This is what The Guardian reports on the statement of one witness, um, Canadian medic Ben Thompson. He testified that when he visited the tent city in Rafa in March, water was rationed to three litres a day, and there was one toilet for every 800 people. One toilet for every 800 people. He said he was forced to reset bones without pain medication, and that on one occasion... Such was the overcrowding in a hospital that a man in his care died on the floor in a pool of his own blood and brain matter. 
in his own blood and brain matter. Now, these are the kind of statements, sentences, like it's, it's just unbelievable that we're 10 months into this war. We've been reading statements like this for 10 months. You know, actually the most deadly phase of the war was in those first couple of weeks, right? That was when they were killing just whole families in one go and loads and loads of them. Um, obviously, the, the atrocities are continuing. And <laughs> Labour is still, as far as I understand, not publishing their legal advice. So there's this constant sort of, oh, we're looking into it. Uh, maybe we'll stop arms sales at some point in the future. It's been very clear to see for 10 months that we are funding a genocidal war, right? that we are selling arms to a government that is bombing women and children. And as we talked about sort of with Daniel Levy at the start of this show, this is not a war which is achieving any goal which the British government should be supportive of, right? This is not about the right to self-defense for, for an ally, for a people, right? This is, I mean, on the, on the most crude level, it's a political leader, Netanyahu, who wants to save his skin, so he thinks that sort of continuing this war is is helpful because he thinks he's inevitably going to have to resign afterwards and um, he's, you know, then uh, sort of his letting October the 7th happen, not intentionally, by the way, but sort of his failures when it came to October the 7th will come to light. So at the most crude level, we are enabling someone to carry out a genocidal war just to save his own political skin. Obviously, on a more fundamental level, it goes way beyond Netanyahu and what we are enabling is a political establishment and a political class that wants a greater Israel. The idea that we can say we're committed to a two-state solution, we uh, object um, when Smotrich and um, the other far-right leaders say sort of nasty things about the Palestinians, but we'll continue to sell them arms while they carry out a war which has no purpose other than to make Gaza unlivable. What is David Lammy doing? Right, you know, he's he's obviously you know, we're going to keep hearing him sort of talking tough. I'm sure, sort of, when the Labour Party conference comes around in a couple of weeks, he'll try and get a few um, sort of rounds of applause for saying we can't let any government breach international human rights, and we will talk tough to Israel when we need to. We won't be afraid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, then use the actual leverage that you have, and obviously, Britain isn't one of the biggest sort of sellers of arms to Israel. But we are a very important country when it comes to international diplomacy. If we were to block arms sales to Israel, that would put pressure on the Americans and the Germans who are massive exporters of arms to Israel. So the idea that we're 10 months into this, we've heard so many words from you know, political parties from across the West saying, oh, Israel should really temper what they're doing. We, we care about the human rights of Palestinians, but we're still going to sell them arms. And then obviously this brave person working in the foreign office who's resigned I mean, how many more warning signs do we need before these people take some action? Because at this point, it looks pathetic. And it's more than pathetic, it's criminal, isn't it? It's the enabling of a genocidal war against an undefended people.